That was probably like 2010 or something like that. Yeah. 2009. Uh, no, it had to be like 2010 because when my, my, my son Marlon left in 2010, and then that's when I went to go uh, live with Josh. 2010. He started, he started bringing me around and shit. And I'm like, damn, you still locked in and still doing this? You still uh, messing with uh, the other seeds and all of that? Nah. He had moved back to uh to Ohio. So I only and really he ain't even like doing music. Like he had switched it up and bro was like being a chef. So yeah, he went far I left with it. I mean he always like cooking and shit, like from just even just being at the crib. So he had a little moment where he had to sit down and I guess that's when he just came out and was like, Hey, look, this is what I wanna do. So he did that when he moved back up to Ohio. And then I think he got got in school and shit and just started doing it. True. Cause yeah. I told y'all hey, I'm good. Cause uh last time out, you know, I was around y'all, y'all had some uh doing up some, some big stuff. Y'all had like a website, y'all selling uh leasing out beats and all that kind of stuff. Y'all being placement. Now we had good moves going. Um a lot of shit going, but at the end of the day, niggas was getting so sidetracked doing other things that was really, really taken away from like the music. Like we were so caught up in doing other shit where we was we was working, but at the end of the day, like we really weren't really like working like that, like because of so much other shit going on. So after a while, you know, it, it was straight. It was straight, but it was just situations, unfortunate situations presented. Where bro, I had to sit, you know what I mean? And shoot, I had to get my shit together, you know what I mean? I had to, like, shoot, I ain't really got this it, you know what I mean? This ain't, ain't really no other going to figure out to do something else. Yeah. Like, this it, this what we doing. So I had to just get back and luckily, like, you know, shoot, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing to pick back up because it ain't like I was even out of, out of loop or anything like that, but it's just, Soon as you know that situation, we soon as we really he moved back home and all that shit happened, like bro, my shit just went up. So, so like since then, like uh, what artists do you frequent? Like you work with often? I mean, shoot, I got Osiris son. That was like the latest big thing. That was last year. Okay. Really, really, it was that was twenty. What is twenty twenty? So that was twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen, huh? Def Jam. Yeah. So, like, what artists, if you can name a few, like, have you worked for, like, you know, engineered for? Oh, shoot, the list is long. Um, anywhere from Thug, Future, Migos, um, shit, Engine Usher, shit. Uh, man, my mind go blank every time I be trying to think of so many people because it really just is. It's damn near everybody. I've been doing this shit for so long yeah. that I didn't just really like fucked around with so many people. Like it's crazy when you think of certain things. Like niggas is really a part of this culture. Like a lot of stuff that came out. Like I'm a part of that that culture. Like that whole movement and shit. Like deeply in it. So it's just the shit. It's it's crazy. I be forgetting. It's, it's I don't work with a lot of people. I don't work with everybody. Like the only people I that I ain't work with that I want to work with right now is Travis Scott. Okay. And I know, like, if you work with him, bro, he gonna put you to work. Cause you know, he's man, what? all kind of plugins and- Man, he do all types of shit, but it, it it's, it's hard for just to, you know, when you fuck around with niggas like that, that's just like practice, like sensei practice. They ain't doing it, but like getting you better, like you sparring. Yeah. So of course, you gonna learn more things. You gonna, you gonna learn like that, man, this shit, with this music shit, it's just about learning every day anyway. Yeah. That's all it's about. Like, learn. Like, you can never stop learning. The moment you feel like you know everything and know too much, that's the moment you fall off. Right. 
Yeah, that's the know, moment you follow. Because the game evolves every day, especially like yeah, like, yeah, it does. Sound and you know, yeah, I can only imagine. Shit, like so, have you like received any like any type of plaques or anything for any projects you worked on? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, last year niggas did good. Like last year was a very good year because one, she just run everything with Osiris. Like when we went. 2018, we went on this first big tour with uh, Lil Baby. Did that. And then uh, this past year, we just did Kevin Gates. It was Kevin Gates and Ride Wave and him. Okay. Um, shoot. Right after down, after he signed, like, we had to, like, bro got a deal and he ain't even had no songs or nothing. Like, he just got signed off the Instagram clip. Like, it shit started going crazy and everybody just wanted in on it. Okay. And, we got crazy. We got all types of offers, all types of offers from everybody. But Def Jam was like, shoot, niggas fuck with Def Jam because Def Jam was at a point. Like, Atlantic offered us something crazy. But we was like, Atlantic so stacked. Like, all these things, everybody signed to Atlantic. So, I mean, not saying that you just know you're going to that you're going to slow down, but you don't even want to put yourself in the position to where if something was to slow down that it'd be hard getting back up in, in front of in that attention. Yeah. I mean, from your, your, your executives, the people that's running your situation. So we knew that Dev Jam was pretty much in like a rebuild type situation where they was really trying to find a new face of like this new culture that's coming up, even without the, all the young kids. So we went over there with them and shoot pretty much, you know, they, Things but things were going quite well with it. You know I mean, out of brother drop, well, he dropped his first album in October. And the album went gold. Uh, his lead single was worth it. That song did uh triple platinum. Um he got another song called Ride with K Lunny. It went gold. And the album went gold. So I mean, I made I got like what three off of him from last year. And then I got like three off of Thug. Two, I got one where I did a joint on Kodak album with Thug. It's called Top Out Bands. Okay. I got a, that shit just went platinum. So I got platinum joint off of that. Then I got um, that Easy Breezy went go for Thug. Um, what else? He had a couple singles, a, sick, a single with Nicki Minaj and shit. That shit went gold, I think. And he got a couple more, I think. So, yeah, I'm starting to get them. Them, so like, they, them is just finally starting to come in. True, true. So just like being in the um, studio with these people, like these artists, right? Are Man. you starting to see like a new sound coming in or like a new wave that's just about to come out? Man, it's just like it's just like you said. It's a new wave of shit coming every day. Like, like, like every day you coming in here. Every day you coming in because, I mean, when you work in that certain spot, just you, you if you if you move your clients, you gonna you gonna continually be having all types of people coming in. So like, it's a few people that I just even been re recently been recording that just you hearing them. It's like, oh yeah, when this shit open back up, that's all it is. Like, all, niggas really can't. You could do you could do stuff, but you really can't do that much going crazy as far as with promo and then really going like really putting the groundwork in right now because we inside. You know the COVID situation messed, like I said, it messed every, it messed everything up for a lot of people. So all you really pretty much could do was just be in the studio recording, and then you know try to be on this live to live turned in everybody's promo. Right. The more more people I could have on my live, and of course playing other people's shit, I could be advertising my own shit. That's the only way that people was able to get to these people and see them. So. So like have the um like the pandemic help to hurt your business like as far as you getting uh, placements like work. I mean, for, a pro for for the production side of it, for the production side of it, it was still straight. The engineering side of it, it, it was still straight because you know it made nigg niggas can. It, everybody had to be in the studio. Yeah. Like uh, of course, niggas was at home, and when they went at home, niggas was in the studio working. So that's why majority of these people, yeah, they was working on albums. The majority of these people damn near dropped the album during this time because you that's all you had was time. You should have the album done, plenty videos, like everything should be 
locked in because you'd have so much time to be chilling. It ain't like you can say, oh, I got to go on the road to go pick up these bags because that's out of nothing right now. Yeah. So since you know you can't get money that way, these niggas, is it, they, shoot, the only way we can do is just drop shit. So however long it takes, we, we know we got this publishing check coming on it. And because shit is going crazy, we probably can get an advance on our pub- publishing check. Right, right. So niggas had to record and and get beats and all that shit. So that's that's the only they producers and shit and engineers and songwriters and shit was the, they were still able to make good money. Right. Well, I'm pretty sure money slowed up because well, it did slow up because a lot of people wasn't in the label offices. Right. So as far as getting things cleared and really just getting your paperwork, it's, it took, you know, it took longer than normal. Yeah. But other than that, it's just, you know, you st- at the end of the day, you know that check is coming in. So it's like, hey, I ain't got to stress too hard because that shit going to come. It's going to come right on time. True. So, like, do you see, like, any change with the artists? Like, do you think it's affecting them in any kind of way as far as, like, Hell yeah. Their lifestyles and shit. Hell yeah. Man, nigga, bro, you got to understand. All right, you make good money on publishing. The only way you making great money on publishing is if you, like, selling. If your shit's going platinum and shit like that, you running radio. Right. That's the only way you really getting a, a big pub check like that. Right. So the other way these people, be like rappers and all, and all the artists, they get their check is on that road. I mean, they doubling up. They can go do a show, then do an after party. You know, some people, you know, making... Nigga like baby making a hundred and fifty thousand a night. Show and after party. So if you know you and you could do that, you know, three, sometimes maybe four times oh in a weekend. So that's true. Six, five, at least half a million in a weekend.